welcome back and uh, thanks for watching my channel. If you got the time, please go down and subscribe and hit that like button or hit the dislike button. Probably the dislike button, but whatever. Uh, I don't care. No, but really, uh, please hit the dislike button. Today's video is going to be about two things. Uh, first of all is reaming. Um, the process I went through to ream the horizontal stabilizer. Um, and then the other thing is uh, practicing using the high saw. So let's get to it. Okay, so uh, today we're gonna talk about reaming. And uh, basically the first thing um, the manual said was to pull out these two reamers for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, this one was used in the uh, aft spar, I guess you would call it, for the horizontal stabilizer. There's some holes, small holes that uh, went through that, and uh, that was relatively easy. I just hooked up a, a, a T-handle and turned it through, and it was real easy. So just as a reminder, uh, with the reamers, you need to look at them and see which way the cutting edge goes. If I take this reamer and spin it around, I know the cutting edge is on my fingers right now because it's pulling at my fingers. If I go backwards, I can actually spin it through my fingers. So the, the, the rule is always turn it in the cutting direction. If you apparently turn it opposite in the non-cutting direction, you could potentially dull the cutting edge. So just keep that in mind, but uh, here's this one. The next one was uh, a little bit bigger. These were for the holes that uh, attaches the uh, elevator to the horizontal stabilizer. And just a comparison, you can see the size difference, uh, quite a bit bigger. Now, with this one, what was uh, uh, unusual is that this reamer came as a complete cylinder from this direction. And the manual recommended using, like, I guess a channel lock or a plier or uh, maybe even a, a vice grip um, type of plier to rotate this through the holes. And I think I did try to do that a little bit, but um, it was difficult and it was going to take a long, long time. And I wasn't guaranteeing that it was going to stay straight. So uh, I just want to say thanks to Aaron Butte at Salt Fox uh, channel and uh, Kevin at the Spectre Fox channel. Uh, Kevin showed how to do this. Um, they both uh, definitely helped out in uh, giving some good information. They both are great YouTube channels in building the uh, Kit Fox, and I recommend uh, heading over there and, and taking a peek because uh, any more information you can get is always a, a good thing. So uh, basically, I just followed what Kevin did, and I went and I ground this reamer at the end until I got a nice uniform shape and that's the shape I got and what that allowed me to do is to pop a socket onto the end of this and then I attached an extension and then I got the uh, the ratchet uh, connected to that and I was able to uh, give some uh, pushing force in the direction that it needed to go and turn at the same time and uh, that was kind of the key because it was very difficult to do that just with a plier or, you know, um, a vice grip type of thing. So um, I, just be warned that you definitely want to get some paper towel around that uh, aft spar because this will kind of knock a little bit. You don't want to scratch off the um, powder coat as much as possible. But that's it. Um, let's go ahead and get to the uh, videos. And just as a reminder, Turn these only in one direction. Whether you're going in or backing out, you want to turn it only in one direction. Here we go. Let's uh, roll the footage.
Okay, two things you, you probably saw me do there. Um, one, after each uh, time I was uh, reaming a hole, I would take a paper towel and clean it off, try to get all the powder coat and any burrs that could possibly you know, cut into the, the, the surface of the, that I'm actually reaming. Um, get all that stuff out of there, and then I follow it up with a Q-tip, um, again, to get more of the powder coating, the, the shavings and stuff that um, the ream, reamer, you know, produced. And then on top of that, I would go back and uh, take the Q-tip, dip it in some uh, denatured alcohol, and wipe that whole area down. And I still, even after that, got um, some residue on the Q-tip from that. So, uh, very important. Uh, in addition to this, um, you probably want to follow up with uh, some sort of sealing oil, something that's going to prevent the exposed chromoly from um, uh, uh, corroding basically. So um, Kevin from the uh, SpectraFox channel suggested Bow Shield, and uh, let me get some of that. Ironically enough, I had gone to um, uh, Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, had my bikes with me, didn't have any oil protectant, it kind of rained. I wanted to get something on the chain and stuff. So I picked up this, the T9, and it shows for bikes, Bow Shield, B-O-E, which is for Boeing, because I think Boeing created this junk shield. And I just took this and put it on a Q-tip and wiped it around on the surface, and uh, hopefully that will do a good enough job. It is for aircraft, by the way. Um, or at least it was originally created for aircraft, but uh, hopefully that will get enough shield uh, to the exposed metal to delay the, the corroding process. All right, let's continue. Okay, so today I'm gonna be working with uh, the Hisol 9460. So what's the first thing we're gonna do with that? Well. I want to work with it, practice with it, mess around with it, see how it uh, is to work with. So what's the first thing that we do? Well, I think the first thing we do is look at these guys. Use, properly use the Hisol. Um, gives you information about it. One-to-one -one ratio, that kind of stuff. But these two things are what I really want to look at. And specifically, it says up in the right-hand corner, safety data sheet on both of them. One is for the resin, and the other is for the hardener. Uh, right off the bat, what's important to see is that we've got a exclamation mark, and then this one is what's really important. So it's... Uh, kind of like acid, it can eat into things, including your hand. So that's what we need to look at. Precautions, what are we gonna do? Well, we've got the two guys here. Here's the other one, hardener. This is the bad one. They're both bad, but I think one's worse than the other. Um, what are we gonna do? We're gonna protect our skin. We're gonna wear gloves. We're gonna wear our mask. And I wear glasses, so there's some protection right there, but it probably would be a good idea to put some safety glasses. So this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm testing out a couple things. I wanna know what kind of bead line I can get. That's gonna be too thick. This one's cut down a little bit. You know. And the harder thing is, is that I'm going to be going around, uh, you know, tubing pipes and stuff. So it's going to be a little bit even, a little even more difficult. Bigger ones, that's possible. So that still looks good. I just was playing around with the different sizes. 
That's gonna be a thick V, that's for sure. You know, typical stuff. That's not big enough. And that's pretty tiny. So I got these sticks, unless they're modified, won't work. This medium one here, I like that one. Guess what? All of these, Walmart, Walmart, Walmart. Cheap, cheap, cheap. All right, let's check this stuff out. On goes the mask. Which do we do first? Hardener. Okay, here we go. Let's try this out. Just gonna be measuring it first. Equal parts. Perfect, two grams, I like that. Nice even number. four grams right on the money okay so what do I do with this I'm gonna chuck it there's my mixture my scale away I'm gonna mix them Using a little spatula here. I'm gonna close these off so they don't. All right, let's see what this does.
might be better to use the other side of the plate. I'm not sure. no flocks in it so it's pretty thick I don't know I, I'm wondering if I'm doing it right or not everybody else seems to be a little bit more runny or something so let's see how this goes I wonder if it's picking up the the paper to see how this uh, joint dries. stuff is pretty darn thick. That being a one to one ratio. I just don't know. I wonder if the paper plate is causing an issue. got this lumpy, silvery texture that I haven't seen from everybody else using this stuff. I'm a little suspect right now. Let's see how cleanup goes. Let's see if I can clean this up. That's not too bad. Let's pick the towels out. I'm falling apart. Got this silvery look to it. It's really kind of weird, a little shiny sheen. I don't know. This is just uh, not what I expected. I'm leave that. What does it say? Eight hours or something like that. I'm gonna leave it overnight. I'll take it in the morning. And I'll be right back to you. Okay, it's the next morning, and just looking at my work. You 
can see the texture of the high saw is a little unusual. I don't know why it did that. But it is solid. I didn't roughen up the wood. I'm just saying anything, that's why. So we can try it again. Okay, we're gonna try it again. Two twenty. Rough it up, or actually I missed it. I think we're smoothing it out. These shims have so much. Texture to them, they're so rough. So that's that, and I also have, where'd I put it? A few of these plastic solo cups. I guess the concern is the heat created, is it going to melt anything? This is pretty deep, I'm gonna have to cut this. Okay, here we go. Uh, next morning, round two, I think it looks much better. Definitely could do a little bit better cleanup, but this is just some crazy wood. And the metal is much easier to clean up. You can see the staining there, but definitely a good bead. This stuff is hard. All right, let's see. Yeah, I don't want to put too much pressure on it. It's not going to matter because it's not something I'm really going to keep. But it's definitely stronger than yesterday's and it's not still fully cured was it three days or something like that I think yeah so what have we learned well there's a little gap there I think it slid a little bit some of it got underneath that was just my work so what do we learn? Um, definitely don't use these paper plates to mix this stuff. It's so weird because I don't know if you can see this texture, but the, there it is. The texture on the back of this plate somehow reflected into the epoxy. I don't know if it was taking bits of the paper off or something and causing it to do that, but I don't know. 
So, not use that. Uh, definitely use plastic cups. I gotta find a smaller version. <laughs> the heat that it created was not significant. I'm not creating a huge batch, so the temperature is nice and low in here, so I think I think that'll be fine. I think we'll be good with that. Um, and the next thing, plain and simple. Just the round edge of popsicle sticks so I don't have to modify them or anything, which is wonderful. So I feel good about working with the epoxy now. Here we go. All right, just tried to separate these two. And look what happened. It broke, but it didn't break at the break at the uh, glue joint. That was me using right hand here and left hand here, putting a nice angular force, and it only broke the the shim. So. And I would say good enough is half done. Okay, that uh, just about covers it for the high saw. I feel really good about using it now. Um, shouldn't be any surprises. Uh, again, the, the variables here I think are um, temperature. Uh, I do have this environment at a constant 74 degrees as you can see right there on my mini split. Um, and uh, that keeps the, the dry time of the uh, high saw consistent and predictable. And I think that's what's uh, really important. If I didn't have the space um, uh, environmentally controlled, then I mean, I could have huge variabilities in, in dry time uh, or set time uh, during the summer and the winter months because we're, you know, right now we are uh, in the throes of August, uh, strong, high humidity, and mid-90s. Um, in the wintertime, it completely reverses. Uh, it doesn't dry out that much, but still it's, it's uh, a bit colder. Uh, seeing days in the 40s and then... Um, you know, uh, two days later, it could uh, be in the 80s again. So it, it's really crazy. It's a, I think it's important to have a consistent uh, temperature for the glue and stuff. Um, so here's uh, the results. Uh, the first one I did uh, was with the paper plate. And as you can see, I don't know if this was uh, from the plate itself peeling off into the high saw, I don't know, but it left this unusual texture. Didn't didn't look uh, or feel like, or it didn't look like what other people were using from their channels. And I only did one side, but the whole piece broke off. I don't even know where the other piece is. Second day, day. Day two of uh, working with the high saw. Um, basically, I think I figured it out. Uh, definitely, this is just high saw. I changed to a plastic cup, smoother. I did two strips, not the whole line. I did actually the whole line on the other side. But again, this worked out very consistently. It looks really good. Uh, tried angular force on it and it was very strong. All that broke was the uh, shim itself. So, how can I get the light? There we go. So, I feel really good about this. Now, the there's a third thing I did uh, do. I wanted to also work with the uh, Phlox. So, Phlox is cotton Phlox. Um, here it is. Can we see it? Bam. Okay. And I mean, it's just shredded cotton fiber. Oof. And it's, it's like a dust. 
um, can be bad for your lungs. People who work in textile mills and stuff, the stuff is floating around and they do get, I think, some lung disease from uh, being exposed to that stuff so long. So you don't want to inhale it. But uh, I did put a couple scoops into the third batch and mix it up. You can tell it's much um, thicker and uh, did the same thing here. One long bead on one side. It's a little bit messier and I'm gonna be using masking tape, I think, in the long run. So I don't get all that mess all over the place, but two over here. And this thing is flipping crazy strong. So I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, um, but that's it. So that's my experience with reaming and using the Hysol. Uh, I do feel very comfortable using the high saw now where I can apply it to um, the aircraft. Uh, shouldn't be a factor. And I can also easily teach my son how to use it safely. And he will be using it. Um, just got to get him on it and get him off the video games. And, uh, you know, that's his whole, whole social network right now. All his buddies are online and they talk to each other over the video games. But... Uh, he is interested in learning to build this airplane as well. Um, okay, I digress. Um, next time, what am I going to be doing? Uh, next time is rib prep. Uh, there is a little bit of a prep uh, to get the ribs uh, on the horizontal stabilizer ready. Uh, I ran into a few problems, not too big, but um, I think I can resolve them uh, down the road and you'll you'll see when I when I talk about it. but uh, prepping the ribs and then possibly I'll show you a, a one that I'm going to glue on with the high saw so for now thanks for your time I know this is probably a long one but uh, thanks for your time and I uh, hope this is beneficial to everyone please give recommendations on my videos I'm working on things trying to make it better I got some lighting for me right here uh, I don't look like I'm beat anymore and it's not so dark. Um, again, this whole process is a learning curve for me. Uh, every aspect, I've uh, taught myself Adobe Premiere Pro. My gosh, the internet is great. You can learn anything off the internet. Uh, still learning Adobe Premiere Pro, not an expert, not even uh, out of the beginning stage on that uh, software. Uh, very powerful stuff, but uh, and again, uh, the all the footage, the the drone footage is mine. Learning how to use my drone, learning how to use a camera, uh, a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it, and uh, what I found is I, I really love to video uh, weather. Um, as you saw in the beginning, that uh, little weather pick, it was a little tight. Uh, it did start to rain. I got the uh, the drone down quick enough, but. Um, that gust front and uh, roll roll cloud there was pretty pretty interesting, and uh, you know sunsets and everything it's 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 fantastic. Uh, another perspective, and again, it's it's uh, gives everybody a perspective of what it's like to view the world from above. Uh, just amazing. That's I think one of the favorite things I like about flying is. Uh, just the perspective. So for now, again, I thank you. Please stay tuned, like, subscribe, and watch my videos. Take care.